Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jackie, and today we're celebrating World Honey Bee Day. So let's get started. For DIY number one, I'm going to begin with three of these MDF wood block houses from the Dollar Tree, removing all the stickers and the residue with my finger sander. And I'm also going to take some of these burlap pieces that they have now. This one is in the honeycomb and the other two are just bees. One in the yellow, one's in the black. And I'm going to utilize the backs of these houses. And I'm just going to snip off enough of this burlap or these burlap pieces to place on the backs. And I'm going to adhere them with some of this Beacon Fabric Tech Fabric Glue. And I'm just going to go around the whole edge of these houses and placing my burlap pieces on top and spreading it down, patting it down, and this adhesive sets pretty quickly so didn't take long didn't take long at all so now that they're all adhered I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to snip off all the excess burlap to look like this and now I'm going to take some more of this burlap and I'm going to snip off some of these these uh, bees because they are so adorable now my first thought was to do a little fussy cut and do a pretty intricate detailed cut but it was a little bit much <laughs> So I just went ahead and just cut them in this manner. This was good enough for me. So then I'm going to take some parchment paper and place it on top of my pieces because they were curling up a little much. And I'm going to take my mini easy press to press them down. And now I'm pretty happy with them. So now I'm going to go ahead and press down all these pieces of burlap as well because they were kind of lifting up a little bit. This helped a lot. I probably should have went ahead and pressed, pressed all the burlap before I started, but yeah. I didn't. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take these bees and figure out where I want to place them. I decided to do the yellow on the right and the black on the left, and then a mixture of both in the center in this manner. This is really my thought process here. <laughs> Trying to figure it out. Now I'm going to go ahead and do some more adhering with some more of the Beacon Fabric Tech glue. I really like this glue for fabric items like this burlap now I'm going to take some hot glue this is in the yellow from Amazon and it's nice and melted in my my glue gun so I'm going to add some honey details because after all we're celebrating world honey bee day so we got to add some honey so I'm just going along this whole edge on this roof and I end up also doing the tops the very tops as you can see here yeah I went a little crazy <laughs> I like the way the two light ones came out, but then the black one, you couldn't see it very well. So I decided to get some of the rub and buff. This is in the gold. And I'm going to place a little bit on my finger and just rub it where the glue is at. And now it really pops. It's more like a golden. And then that I just kind of went crazy with it and just placed it all over the place and on the others as well. <laughs> yeah, when you start using this stuff, you can't stop because the effect is just so pretty and it really elevates it to another level, I think. Really cute. So then I'm gonna take some jute twine and I'm gonna anchor a little piece on the side here and press it down with my silicone spatula. And now I'm gonna begin to just do an accent with some of this jute twine. I wrapped it around maybe a good three or four times just to give it that little rustic kind of feel. And then I secured the end to the other side, like this. And now I'm taking the frayed pieces of burlap and create a knot, that way I can use to embellish, as well as some bows and some flowers. And that is it, double-sided. This is how one side looks, and this is how the other side looks. And a closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number two, I'm gonna take two packs of these foam dice from the Dollar Tree and I actually use a fifth one as well. And I'm gonna go in with the chalk pen in the color Snow White, give it a full coat, and now go in with the Waverly chalk pen in the color Ink to do a little bit of dry brushing. Just to dirty it up a little bit, so I just go around all the edges and set it aside, allow it to dry completely. And now I'm gonna take some of these wooden letters from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna go in with the Waverly chalk pen in the color Ink to spell out the words Buzz, Hive, Honey, and Sweet. And I didn't have enough ease, so I took some of the bees and I'm going to cut them <laughs> to create my own ease. 
hey, we do what we have to do, right? Okay, so now I'm taking one of these paint markers just to touch up the edges where I cut off the side of the B. <laughs> oh, how ironic, the B. <laughs> and also painted, actually I painted two of these other Bs. <laughs> That's on the top, I actually did two. And those bees are actually from Amazon. And now I'm taking my yellow paint marker to create some faux stitching. And I did this to all the pieces. And now it's time to start assembling. So here are my dice. And I have them lined up in this manner, but they're actually going to, going to go vertical. And by the way, I was very surprised to find these at the Dollar Tree again. It's been a while. So here I'm trying to place my wooden letters where I want them. And I did one word on each side. So buzz on one side, honey on the other side, hive, and then sweet. And now I'm taking that same hot glue in the yellow and I'm doing some accents on here with the hot glue. And I just love the way it comes out. It looks like real honey, the way it kind of just drips down. The dripping effect, it's pretty fun. So now I go ahead and place some more on the top so I can start building these. And here I got a little bit unsure where it was, <laughs> where it was what? <laughs> but I got my bearings straight. <laughs> and now I'm taking some of these bamboo rings. Some are from the Dollar Tree and some are from Amazon. And I'm going to add glue, this hot glue going all the way around and start building a little beehive. So the fact that they're just different sizes makes it work perfectly. I've made these before, but I decided I want one of these cute little beehives to go on the very tippy top of my dice tower. Or should I say bee tower? <laughs> <laughs> and using the hot glue in this yellow color makes it look just like honey just oozing out so it's perfect perfect for this so I just keep building and building until I get it all nice and built keep adding that honey that faux honey almost done and I just allow this to just ooze out and I also added some of the Dollar Tree little wooden bees that came out in the spring. Look how adorable. So here's my little tower. Look at that. Looking so good. And yeah, it's screaming for a little beehive on the top. So I just added some more of this glue for the faux honey effect. And added my little beehive and some more of these little wooden bees. bees. And here's Buzz. And then here's Honey. And here's Hive. And here's Sweet. And a closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number three, I'm taking this Bloom sign from the Dollar Tree. I love the shape of it. It's really pretty, but I'm just going to do something totally different with it. And I'm going to go in with the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Ink and Maze. And I actually did white instead, <laughs> instead of the Maze. Now here I cut out with my Cricut. It says Mimi's Beautiful. Get it? Beautiful. Yes, this is going to represent my grandkids. Just had to do it. Now here it was a little difficult to line it up because I used the, the vinyl in the color black. But I think I got it straight enough, I think. You guys let me know if it looks crooked. And now I'm going to go in with the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Maze. And I'm going to cover up all the lettering. I'm loving this kind of effect with chalk paint and now I'm going to take this smaller brush and I'm just going to flick some little like dots on it just for another add of effect. I think the yellow with the yellow, I think it looks cute. And now I'm going to take my weeding pen and I'm going to remove all the vinyl lettering. Try to be careful, make sure I don't smudge too much. I think I did smudge a little bit on a couple of the letters, but We'll end up sanding it anyway, so it'll be all right. So look, it looks pretty cute. Allow that to dry completely. In the meantime, I'm taking some of this fabric from the Dollar Tree in the honeycomb print, and I'm going to snip off a piece that I think I need. I did paint these bees in the color black, in the color ink by Waverly, and these bees were from Amazon, by the way. So now here is the piece that I'm going to snip off because these will be the backing to these bees because I really want the yellow to pop with them. So here I'm placing some parchment paper to protect my surface and I'm going to saturate this piece of fabric with some Mod Podge. And now I'm gonna place my bees on top, press them down, and then allow this to dry completely. 
Here they are, nice and pretty. Here they are, nice and dry. And I'm going to remove all the parchment paper. And now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to start snipping them off. This one, I did do more of a fussy cut because the colors were just popping so pretty. So I went ahead and did that. It took me a while, I gotta say, but it was worth it. Look at this, beautiful. Now here is my Mimi's Beautiful and some sandpaper to kind of weather it a little bit, make it look a little weathered. So that's why I said it doesn't matter if you if your paint runs a little bit, it's, the sandpaper kind of hides it anyway. Yeah, it conceals it pretty well. So here I'm placing my little bees where I want them to go. Five little bees for my five little grandkids. And then I'm gonna, going to adhere them on the sign. Look how cute. And I'm pl placing the hanger back on with the knots on the outside. I really like the knots on the outside as opposed to the knots on the back side. I just think it's a prettier look. Look how adorable. This is how it looks. And a closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number four, I'm going to begin with one of these glass recycled jars and some of these bamboo utensils and I'm going to paint them in the color Snow White from Waverly and here I'm showing you these beautiful napkins that I picked up from Amazon. They're made in Germany and they are beautiful. So I took one out, one is all I needed. The print is, is on four sides so you really get a good bang for your buck on these let me tell you. And I'm going to take some painter's tape to remove the two layers off the one layer, it came off pretty easily. And now I'm gonna take a paintbrush and some water and I'm going to paint the water lines to, so I can just remove the excess napkins. That way it tears it off really nicely and I don't have any harsh edges. And now I'm gonna take this napkin that was purchased off Amazon as well and I'm going to remove one more bee. I used this, I think last year, so I needed one more bee, so I just removed that with some water. Now I'm going to go in with the Mod Podge, and this is just the mat. And I'm going to place a little bit of mat Mod Podge on the spoon part, and then place the bee, and then coat it, seal it on the top. And I did the same for the spatula, and the same for the, I think that's like a spaghetti spoon because of the hole. I'm not really sure what it's called. You guys know what kind of spoon that is? Let me know, because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just thought it was cute. So I just added the Mod Podge, and then my last little bee, placed it on the very top, removing more of this excess napkin paper. I didn't want it to look too harsh. So here I just sealed it up, and then set these aside to allow them to dry. But look how cute. So now here is my jar. This jar is actually from coconut oil that we like and so I just placed some Mod Podge on there here is my napkin piece and again I'm just removing some more of these lines on one edge they were a little bit too harsh really didn't want that line I did leave the line on the bottom just to help me line it up on the very bottom of this jar but I placed plenty of Mod Podge thin coat but enough of it and here I'm just kind of very gently with my fingers working it to go around the curve of this jar and it did a great job now I'm going to go ahead and seal it all up and I did this to both sides so both sides of this jar has this beautiful napkin print the bee with the wreath around it and I just think it's so pretty but I went ahead and did this for both sides now I set this aside let allow this to dry here's both sides all nice and done now I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I'm going to go ahead and do another coat to seal it completely. Originally my coat of Mod Podge was just to get it on there, but here I wanted to seal it up 100%. Now here are my utensils, looking great. And here is my jar, nice and sealed. So now I'm going to take some of this ribbon, and I think I got this one from Amazon. It's like a burlap ribbon. And I'm just going to adhere a little piece on one end and go around the whole circumference of the top of the opening and adding another dab of glue and adhering this piece that way it gives it another cute little effect i like this burlap against this type of diy 
Now here I'm using the same ribbon to create a little bow. Snip off the ends and do dovetails. And placing a dab of glue to secure it to the front of my jar. Look at that. Looking cute. And here I'm just placing a clip to help keep it up there. But yeah, it didn't take long. Nice and set. Now here are the bows for my utensils. And here's how they look. And a closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number 5, I'm taking two packs of these wood planks from the Dollar Tree. I was so happy to find these again. And I'm going to take some of the super glue wood glue and I'm going to adhere two planks of wood together and then clipping them to keep them nice and still. And I do this to six. <laughs> I almost forgot how many. I did this to six. That way I have more of a chunky wood as opposed to the thin wood, thin, the thin planks. So now I'm removing all my clips, everything nice and dry, and we are going to create a little bee house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some wood glue, some of the super glue wood glue, and I'm going to add a nice bead in the center of one edge and a couple of bits of hot glue on the sides. That way it, I can work quickly and not have to wait too long. And I'm going to adhere them in this manner, and I do three sets like this and allow them to dry once they're dry then I'm going to go ahead and create like a box so I got to make sure I add the glue to the proper end so one side will be on the top and the other side will be on the edge as you can see here that makes the perfect square So now that that's completed I'm going to take one single plank and I'm going to add some of the wood glue all the way around and then I'm going to place that on the back. This will be the back of the house. Now the last little peak, I'm just gonna add some wood glue to both sides and I'm gonna place this on the very top. So I made something similar in the summer for ladybugs. This is going to be just a little bit different. So now I'm gonna take a bamboo skewer and I'm gonna place a nice bead of glue on the very top just to fill in that gap and it also helps to reinforce all this all these wood pieces together as well so like this and here it is nice and sturdy here I painted it white with the Waverly chocolate in the color snow white and now I'm going to take some of the Mod Podge the matte Mod Podge and these are napkins that I had left over from another project last year and I'm just going to fuse these onto the Mod Podge with my mini easy press and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side now I barely had enough of these napkins these were from Amazon I think I mentioned that and I'm just going to place this piece here and then the other piece I had to cut it to have another full piece to make it a full piece so here I just went ahead and did this and now I have the roof looking super cute and now I'm going to fill the bee house with some of these bamboo pieces and just like this, nice and full, looking cute. Now I'm going to seal up my Mod Podge on the top, on the roof, and I do this to both sides. And once it dried, it did bubble up just a tiny bit, so I went ahead and placed my parchment paper and used my mini easy press to help press everything down. It did have a little bit of texture afterwards, but for the most part, it was very smooth. And all I have to do now is just take my time to remove this parchment paper because it is hot and it is touching the Mod Podge, so you just have to be careful. And now I'm going to do a little bit of embellishing, so I'm going to take a couple of these honeycombs. These are MDF laser cuts, and I'm going to add one to the front of this bee house and one to the very back, which I'll do later because I decided to do it later. <laughs> so now here are some cute little bees. These are from the Dollar Tree, and I go ahead and add these just wherever I felt like a little bee would be cute. So one here and one there, just whatever I thought would be cute. And then I also added a bow to the very top. And like I did mention, I did add another one of these honeycombs to the very back of the house. And then later I added two more to the roofs. <laughs> Here's how it looks and a closer look at the final reveal. For day one number six, I'm going to start with one of these wood trucks from the Dollar Tree and then this beehive is from Walmart and I'm going to go in with these three colors to give it this look 
and I also use black for the tires. And now I'm going to take a black paint marker to complete my little honeybees. So I'm just going to do a few little outlines of where I want my the little lines for the bees to go. And I start doing some little polka dots for the wings. I think that's a cute look. And now I'm going to complete and fill in the, the bee lines. So just make them a little bit more substantial, a little thicker in this manner. So yeah, I am not an artist, but this is what we get. <laughs> this is it guys. <laughs> so now I'm going to place my truck aside for a minute and I'm taking another piece of parchment paper and another piece of that fabric that is so beautiful with the honeycomb on it and I'm going to take some more of the Mod Podge and I'm going to saturate this piece of fabric as well and I'll place my beehive on the top of it like this press it down and now set this aside allow this to dry and now I'm taking another fabric that came from the Dollar Tree that actually my daughter-in-law found for me this is a beautiful fabric it's got all kinds of designs on it I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to show you guys but I'm going to move this piece that's drying aside and look at this this is beautiful wow I love it so I decided to take this little square that's over here that says fresh honey and I'm going to snip it off with my scissors because this piece is going to go on my little truck I thought that would be perfect for my little truck I just have to trim it enough where it'll fit just right it's just a little bit too big for this area on the truck but a little bit of trimming then it works perfectly but now this is looking good now I'm just gonna take some Mod Podge and place it on the truck like this and then place this piece of fabric on top press it down get it to where it's lined up well and taking some more of the Mod Podge and sealing it up on the top in this manner and then setting it aside so it'll dry here it is nice and dry now I'm taking that same paint marker I've been using today and I'm going to outline this piece that way it really makes it pop so just a few little lines here and there and it just makes it just makes it it just it totally makes it it's just beautiful it really makes it pop that's as simple as that set that back aside now here is my honeycomb and my beehive and I'm going to remove all the parchment paper and now I'm going to take my scissors to snip off all the excess fabric and so it looks like this now I'm just going to take this truck and placing a nice bead of regular glue hot glue on the top and placing this beehive on the very top like it's carrying this whole thing that's the fresh honey this whole thing <laughs> so now I'm going to take some to twine and I'm going to replace the hanger and again I'm going to create the knot and place it on the front I just think this is a cuter look and I'm going up the hole on the beehives on the top and I forgot to replace the hole I left the fabric on there so I just made a hole with my scissors and I just pushed the jute twine through with my tweezers in this manner and then created another knot like this so now this will be the hanger yeah it works great so now I'm going to do some embellishing with some more faux honey of course because this driver he was so ambitious that he just took the whole beehive and the honey is just dripping out everywhere yes look at that it's just dripping everywhere <laughs> so I went ahead and added some more faux honey all over this beehive so it looks like this and of course look at the final reveal for DIY number seven, I am taking this little mini pot from the Dollar Tree. I think this was, this was from Valentine's Day or Mother's Day. I'm not sure. Or maybe they had them for both. I don't know. So I'm just going to use the other side. And I'm going to take this tiny little bee that I cut with my Cricut. And I'm just going to place it on the front or on the side of the little pot. And I'm just going to remove the transfer tape. Now I'm just going to take some more of this burlap ribbon that I've been using in this video, pressing it down, go all, the way, 
going all the way around, clipping off the excess and tacking it down with a little bit of glue like this. And using that same ribbon, I went ahead and created another bow. And I'm just going to place that on the very front right above the little B. Look how adorable. Just placing it right on there. Look how cute. Cute. Now I'm taking some more of this faux honey and going around the whole edge of this little pot, taking my time. But here I did speed it up a little bit because otherwise, if I don't speed up some of these clips here, we'll be here for probably two hours or more. I don't know. <laughs> and once I'm satisfied with how much faux honey I have on here, then I go ahead and place my cork top on top. And then I seal it up with some more faux honey. And I'll add a few little plastic bees. And that is it. Here's how it looks and the closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number eight, I'm taking a pack of these mini flower pots. These were from the spring collection at the Dollar Tree. And some of these wooden beads. And I'm going to go in with the color Maze from Waverly. And using my black paint marker again, I'm going to create some rings around these little flower pots and I'm just going to take my time until I get them all done and now I'm going to take some hot glue and adhere these wooden beads onto the tops or should I say the bottoms of these little flower pots I'm creating some little bees with these oh that rhymes <laughs> and now I'm going to take these little pieces of black Chanel stems or pipe cleaners and I'm going to create little antennas and then I'm just going to add some hot glue and stick it in the top of the hole of the beads and form it to how I want it. Just kind of whimsical until I get them done. Look how adorable. Now I'm taking some of this lace ribbon. This is from the Dollar Tree. It's one of the newer lace ribbons. And I'm going to create the little wings. I think this type of lace ribbon would look really cute as wings. I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue and place it on the backs. And look how cute. And I'm just taking the same paint marker and creating some little faces. Nothing too extravagant, just something super simple. Little dots and a little mouth. And that is it for this one. Super cute for two tray. Here's how they look and a closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number nine, I'm taking some more pieces of this burlap fabrics. I'm loving these fabrics, they're so adorable and I went ahead and pressed them that way they're nice and flat and no wrinkles and I'm removing some excess pieces to fray the tops and the bottoms and then also taking my scissors to get everything nice and even like this and I'm just going to wrap these tall candles here on the left hand corner and all I'm going to do is add some hot glue a nice bead and then placing this burlap and turn this turning this over and adhering it to the other side as well make sure to pull it nice and tight and if you add a lot of glue make sure to use your silicone spatula because that stuff goes through this type of burlap fabric so now I'm going to take some jute twine wrap it around a good few times and tying it in a knot no bow or nothing just a knot like this and now I'm going to take the pieces of, of a burlap that I pulled off to fray the ends and I'm going to make a knot with this and add this to decorate or should I say to embellish my project. So just like this and I'm going to get it nice and even and then add some hot glue and place it on top. This just gives it another element of rusticness I guess. And then I'm taking one of these cute flowers. These are also burlap. And I'm just going to take it, add some hot glue, and place it in the center. And that is it for this one. I went ahead and did all three in the same manner. Here's how they look and a closer look at the final reveal. For DIY number 10, I picked up this scrap piece of cardboard. I like the texture on it and I painted it black. Now I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint on the color Maze and I'm just going to do a dry brush on top. And look at that. It almost looks like a honeycomb. Here I'm just doing it pretty light, but I ended up doing a little bit more profound, a little stronger, 
but you can see it come up look at that oh my goodness that is so cool this kind of cardboard has lots of potential I gotta tell you so I went ahead and did the whole piece the front and the back now once I get let that dry completely now I'm taking these words that I cut out with my Cricut be kind be happy be strong and I went ahead and placed them on to my cardboard with some transfer tape and here I'm just showing you real quick how I do it and now being that the words are black it's gonna be a little hard to see but there's a method to my madness hang on <laughs> Now all the words are on there, so now I'm going to take some more of this maize color and I'm going to go over all the words, just like I did in the other DIY with the Mimi's Beautiful Bees. And so I'm just going to add some of this yellow. And now taking my weeding pen, I'm going to remove all the letters again, just like I did in DIY number three, until it looks like this. Now this time I'm not going to sand it because of the fact that this is cardboard. I don't want it to look, I don't want the cardboard to show. I think it would, <laughs> I'm not sure. I didn't want to try it. So now I'm just taking some jute twine and I'm going to wrap this around all the edges. That way you can't see the cardboard edge. And I just go ahead and wrap it as many times as I need. I think I wrapped it a good five times to go around the whole thing. So it looks like this. Now I'm going to take my lighter and remove all the fuzzies. At first I was kind of scared to use the lighter because this is cardboard, but it seemed to work fine. So. I just went for it and removed all the fuzzies on all this jute twine because this jute twine had a lot of fuzzies. So once I got that done, then I went ahead and embellished this piece with a few little bees from the Dollar Tree and a bow made from that same burlap ribbon I've been using in this video. And that is it. Here's how it looks and a closer look at the final reveal. If you're on Instagram, I invite you to come follow me on there. Here's my QR code. I post on there Monday through Fridays. And here is my TikTok QR code. I post on there Monday through Fridays as well. This is my Pinterest handle. All my DIYs are there. This is my handle and QR code for Home Talk. I post on there twice a month. This is my Threads account. And this is my Facebook crafting group. I invite you to come join us. We support each other and we have a lot of fun. And now we're at the final reveal. Let me know what you think and which one's your favorite one.
Well, I'll take a moment and say thank you for taking time out of your busy day to watch my video on World Honey Bee Day. I just couldn't let this day go by without some kind of celebratory something. And I think this video was my way to celebrate them because they're so important in our lives and our agriculture. So I just felt this was my contribution to celebrating them. And this is also my last bee video of this year. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun creating for it. And if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you want to see more, definitely subscribe. And until my next video, stay healthy, safe, and strong. And have a great, great day. Bye-bye.